Because just before all that happened as well, everybody knows with the Harry and Meghan thing, you're very outspoken. You broke the story of them leaving. Yes. How did you get that story? Because that was world headlines. Yeah. One of the biggest couple celebrities, well, celebrities, whatever you want to call them, but they're one of the most known couples on the planet. And yeah. The Americans love the yeah. royalties. They love Meghan and Harry, as far as I'm, well, I know. But how did you? How did that? How did you get that information? Well, so basically, I had been working. I'd basically been breaking stories about Meghan and Harry since a few months after they got married. Because, you know, it became the biggest story in the world. But what was frustrating me is that all of this stuff was going on behind the scenes. So this huge fallout between Harry and Meghan and the rest of the royal family, including the late Queen, by the way. And no one was writing about it. Because there's this weird system in the UK called the Royal Rota, where the royal reporters are like officially sanctioned to cover the royal family. And I actually describe them more like stenographers or like PRs for the royal family. They don't really want to rock the boat because they're the people who, you know, if, um, I don't know, King Charles goes to a trip to India, the royal Rota, they're all on the plane. They go to all the events with him. They see him every day. So they don't really want to go against the narrative, right? And I'm a journalist that believes in exposing the truth, especially if the truth isn't being told. So I believed it was a story actually of constitutional significance, and it turned out to be that way, given they left the family in such dramatic circumstances or left the firm in such dramatic circumstances. But actually, the first story that I broke became quite famous it was known as tiara gate and it was basically about the fact that the late queen and megan had had a big row over what tiara she was going to wear at the wedding now there's been much said about this at the time but uh, since the time sorry and megan and harry have put their version of events and you know there's disagreement about the exact details but the fundamentals of the story were true right which is that the late queen really didn't like Megan and the way she was acting and had told Harry off about the way that she was acting. And within that story, I also revealed that Kate or Catherine, the princess of Wales had had a fallout with Megan. So this was the start. It was the first time, it was the first time any mainstream media outlet in the world had reported on any issues between Meghan and the royal family. Now, of course, we know things were actually a lot worse than that. You know, Prince William and Harry were physically going at each other in Kensington Palace. You know, it was bad. But it's really hard to be the first because it was all denied. You know, everyone said it was untrue. No, 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 they all get on great. What are you talking about? Oh, this is just this, you know, tabloid hack, Dan Wooten making stuff up again. But I knew it was true. Right. So I kept working on the story and I broke lots of stories over the months and months. And actually, people started realizing that I was the person with the balls to break the true stories. So I got more contacts, more royal contacts as I went on. And it culminated in Megxit. And I was actually on holiday in New Zealand. It was just after Christmas 2019. And I got a text message saying, you're not going to believe it. Um they're leaving for good and I worked on the story for about 10 days while I was on holiday in New Zealand it was nerve-wracking because they and Harry has actually since revealed this in his book where he described me as the sad little man (laughs) (laughs) and you know I'm not little that's mad that he's put you in his book though well yeah because because I mean he really dislikes me but um can you understand why though I actually can't because I was not, none of this was about me disliking Harry or Meghan, right? I dislike them now, but none of my reporting was about disliking them. It was just the truth. It's like, he's admitted all of these things happened in his book. Do do you see what I mean? It's like, he did fall out with everyone. He did fall out with William. They did want to leave the royal family. So I don't really understand it, to be honest, because the other thing is that I was talking to all of his team as well, who were briefing me and giving me information. Um, I didn't want to destroy them or anything like that. That was, that was not my goal. It's just this was a big story. I mean, a, 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 you know, fifth in line to the throne, the son of the queen, sorry, the son of the uh, now king, 
quitting the royal family. I mean, it's a huge story. Totally legitimate, completely in the public interest. And they wanted to scupper me breaking the story. So they wanted to announce it themselves. But luckily, I beat them to it. And it obviously became known as Megxit. And then all hell broke loose because, of course, we had uh, the Oprah interview, the claims that Meghan was suicidal and the royal family didn't help her, which is just, I mean, it's bullshit. It's just yeah. bullshit. It's just not true. And the problem is that compulsive liars about both of them see I, I love the idea because of princess diana i i, I actually loved her i didn't know her but i seen the way she operated the move she seemed like a kind hearty person i don't know her but i always bought into the idea he was i seen his mum and him i seen okay he's trying to protect his missus and i could understand that but then they says they want peace but then i started questioning well wait a minute you've done a netflix documentary you've written a book because he always seemed a good kid when you see his mum and stuff, it must have been hard for the questions. Obviously, they'll know the answers, what happened to their mum. And people can go down the conspiracy route and question marks everywhere. And it's understandable the way it mm. happened. But Well, of course it is. I mean, Diana wrote a letter saying she was going to be killed in a car accident. I mean, look, I'm not saying that we should not be asking questions about the death of his mother. But the problem is that he sees everything through that prism. So he sees himself as a victim. Now look, the way that he lost his mother was terrible, right? But he is one of the most privileged men in the world, James. I mean, come on, he has wealth and opportunities that we or anyone listening to this could only dream of. So he went through a terrible thing but he had an opportunity to do whatever he wanted to do real good. And for example, with the Invictus Games, it's very difficult to criticize that, isn't it? I mean, what a great initiative, you know, something for injured service people to give them hope. That's the point of the royal family. And instead, what he did is allow himself to be captured by this woman, Megan, who's not a nice character, you know, who's a very fame hungry and... You know, because remember, I've done lots of reporting on Meghan and what she was like before she was in the royal family. And, you know, she was trying to like, I mean, she was just desperate to date a British guy. Like she tried to date Ashley Cole, uh, the footballer ex of Cheryl, tried to date Matt Cardle, the guy who won the X Factor, tried to date Max George, who was a member of The Wanted. She just wanted a famous British guy that, for, for whatever reason, she'd broken up with her husband. She wanted that. I mean, she hit the jackpot. Prince Harry. I mean, come on. And she never wanted it to work within the royal family. That was, that was too hard for her. So they, they concocted this narrative of, like, racism. And it's just not true. It's not true. They were given so much support. So I thought the story was really legitimate. And yes, now I am, I guess, on the side of the royal family when it comes to this. But I still think the royal family deserves scrutiny too. And as a reporter, I've broken lots of stories about William and Catherine and Prince Andrew, which is obviously hmm. a big scandal too. So I think the Harry and Meghan thing was completely legitimate public interest journalism and i think the public had a right to know and i'm proud that i did it because no other journalist was telling the truth about what went on yeah, it takes guts but like i say i bought i like the fact of his mother trying to protect the family yeah. but then i did see the netflix documentary and it does raise question marks she is an actress again i don't know but but, 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 something but, but, but here's the thing right, though, right. so do you thing. think she, he's so on your go on your go well i was just gonna say Diana, because I loved Diana, right? Growing up, like young closeted gay guy, she was like the ultimate. I thought, she, I think she, I honestly think Diana is, Princess Diana, the most incredible celebrity of my lifetime. She's like a true icon. Like if you look back the last hundred years, who do we have? JFK, 
Martin Luther King Jr., Marilyn Monroe, and Princess Diana. I honestly think she is at that level of celebrity, and she did so much good. She changed the royal family forever. Do you honestly think Princess Diana would want her youngest son literally going to war with Prince William? Her, her eldest son, who she adored and she knew was going to find it so hard to become the king. She would be disgusted with what Harry had done on that front. And Harry attacked Ka uh, Catherine in the book and Camilla. It's like, surely there's like, there's got to be like, because the problem is how can Charles and William ever forgive him? Because they are trying to protect Camilla and Catherine. So he says he's trying to protect Meghan, right? Okay, fine. But then Harry is turning on their wives. Do you see what I mean? It's it's nasty. When did it all start turning? Is that a case of him being naive, her manipulating the situation and being an actress? Or has he got a part to play in it because it maybe it's things that happened yeah. to his mum? Like, what's the whole outcome? Well, I mean, and that, he was vulnerable, wasn't he? I mean, he was clearly a vulnerable guy sort of flapping around in life, not knowing which direction he was going to go in. And I think Meghan massively took advantage of that. But at the end of the day, James, look, I know everyone has their own family issues, but to me, family is everything. Family is blood. You know, I stick by my family through everything. They stick by me through everything. And if you have an issue, you deal with it privately. So for him to publicly attack his father, his brother, his mother-in-law, his sister-in-law in the most brutal manner, well, they're not going to forgive him for that now. Once you've done that, you can't take it back. Do you see what I mean? Because he's saying racism was involved. Yeah. And then saying, oh, no, we didn't say that. It's like, no, 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 you literally did. You literally said that there was a royal racist who commented on the colour of unborn Archie's skin. 